In the last video, we ended with a little program computing the Fibonacci sequence with a 0 and a 1. By using a jump instruction, we create a loop that will keep computing the sequence. But this loop will never stop, so we need a way to get out of it. So prior to setting up the loop, programmers need to know when it should stop. If I only want to compute for 10 times, I will need to get out of it after the 10th. Say after this Fibonacci program, there are other things we want to do, so there would be other instructions afterward. So we need a way to skip this jump instruction and get to here instead. So prior to the regular jump, we need a different jump instruction with a desired address, skipping the regular jump. This jump will only happen if certain condition is true. It's a conditional jump instruction. Here, you specify what conditions to jump. If the condition is met, it will direct us to the desired address, for example, to here instead. So if the condition is not met, then the regular jump will be executed, keeping us in the loop. Say so here, in our example, the condition is if we have computed 10 times. Hence, prior to jump if instruction, we need instructions to set up the conditions first. It involves several things. First, how will the computer know if it has computed 10 times? Remember, in the four registers, R2 is used to store the address for the result. The initial address is 32. R3 stores the increment 1. Each run, after adding this 2, we get a new address for the result in R2. After the first run, we have 33. So if it hits 42, then you know you've done 10 times. Hence, we need to compare this running address with 42. In order to compare, we need to store the reference number 42. We are out of registers, so I'm temporarily using R3. Don't worry about the overwritten increment. We will bring it back what we need. So we use a data instruction to put the reference here. Then we need a compare instruction to compare the two. This compare instruction sets up the conditions for the conditional jump to use. So before talking about the conditional jump, we need to first talk about how to implement the compare instruction. The compare instruction will move the two numbers to the LU side to compare. So we will need a comparator, built from XOR gates. The result of the comparison needs to power the conditional jump instruction. Hence, on a high level, the comparator needs to provide the output wires, indicating if one is larger than the other or if they are equal. Now, let's build this comparator. Say we want to compare these two numbers. We know that if these bits are the same pairwise, then they are equal. Let's take a look at the last pair first. They are in two wires. Feed them to XOR gate. It can tell us if they are equal, because XOR gate outputs high if only one input is high. So if only A is high or only B is high, the output is high. In other words, if we see a high output, that means the two inputs are unequal. But if they are both high or both low, then the output is low. We can use an inverter to tell us that two bits are equal. So if we see a high here, that means the two inputs are equal. Each pair can be checked by XOR gate and an inverter. Now, to conclude that A and B are the same, we need all these inverters output high. Use an AND gate to combine these two, the high output of the AND gate means previous pairs are equal. We use a series of AND gates feeding into one another. The last one tells us if A and B are equal. So if we see a high voltage from this final wire, then we know the two are equal. If any pairs are unequal, for example, say we are comparing these two numbers, then the equal line would output low, meaning they are different. Now, how to tell if A is greater? We know that A is greater because A6 is greater than B6. But how can the wiring tell us if A6 is greater? 
well if they are different, and a six is high, meaning that a six is one b six zero. So if this AND gate outputs high, it tells us a six is greater than b six. But there's a catch. The reason we only need to look at a six is because we know that the prior bits are the same. If b seven is one, then it's not the case. So in terms of wiring, we also need to check this equal line, making sure that all prior bits are the same. Similarly, all these bits need to be checked if bitwise a is greater and prior bits the same. Remember, the outputs from these middle AND gates are doing the cumulative checking, making sure that all prior bits are the same, except for the highest position. No need to check because there are no prior bits. So, if any of these final AND gates output high, then it's enough to conclude that A is greater. So, instead of a series of AND gates, we need a series of OR gates. It allows any of these high to turn on the larger line. We wrap this structure into the big XOR symbol, spitting out two condition wires. These two condition flags are stored in memory cells because they need to power the condition wires for conditional jump to use. Compare instructions need to bring the two numbers to the comparator and store the condition flags. So we need to control when to set these flags. Hence, we need an input control wire to set the flags. Now let's see how the compare instruction looks like. A high computing bit to turn on this computing wire, bringing the two operands to the ALU side. All other operation codes are used except the three highs, so we use that to represent compare instruction. In this case, the two operands are stored in R2 and R3, so high low for RA, high high for RB. Now let's look at the wiring. Most of the existing wiring works. For example, step four, with all these wires flashing, reference numbering R3 is sending to temp, holding one input to the comparator. Step five, the running address in R2 is heating the comparator as the second input. When two inputs are striking the comparator, flags are ready almost instantly. So all we need is to turn on the flag registers to store the flags. So we connect the control wire to step five. The step six wire is for regular computing instructions to send computing result from ACC to register. But in the case of compare instruction, there is no computing result to be stored, so we need to turn it off by ending these three high bits and invert it to turn it off. So compare instruction will store the conditions into flag registers for conditional jump to use. Before we move on to conditional jump instruction, let's review some code changes. Because the last register is used for reference number, we need to bring back the address increment to compute the new address. So we move this data instruction to just before the increase. Now the beginning of the loop is advanced by two bytes. So we need to jump to eight instead. In the next video, we will talk about how to wire conditional jumping structure.